Okay, uh, I'm, uh, I'm at my mom's, uh, watching the cats. Say hi, Amy. Amy. She says hi with her butt. Um, anyway, um, I, I was, uh, I'm in a, I'm in a lot of pain still. Uh, sometimes I can get the pain to go down, like, it's more around, like, it's not around some of my C1 so much as, like, the middle around C3, C4, because, because with when I use braces, that still gets used somehow, I don't know why, like, when I use a hard collar, when I use a soft collar, it's still, I don't get it, um, so, that area still gets sore, and if I lay down for a while, it's, you know, Get better. Hi. Hey, say hi, Amy. Okay. So anyway, um, so I was, I was, I'm alone here, which is aggravating. Well, I have the cats, so that helps. Um, I'm staying for a week to take care of the cats, and it's unusual. Uh, well, you know, I'll get to that, but. I, uh, I went to Total Spine. I drove myself yesterday to Total Spine up in Melbourne because I'm desperate, so that's like a 45-minute drive. And it hurt that same area in my neck, like right around uh, like C3, C4, like on the transverse processes where the ligaments connect. Uh, my muscles are fine. Like all the neck muscles are not like... They're... Like, the ligaments hurt before the muscles have a chance to hurt. So, the muscles usually are plenty well rested. Uh, but, uh, and so anyway, I went up there. And if it was going to hurt around my C1, C2, I wouldn't have gone. But, um, yeah. So, uh, I drove up there and it was really hard emotionally to go to another doctor uh, especially a neurosurgeon because you know I know I know that you know when I go there they're going to look at my MRI they're going to look at my CT and they're going to say yeah we don't see a problem and also when they look at my MRI and CT the problems that it does show they're not even going to notice I'm going to have to show them it was just frustrating you know stuff with my like internal tugular veins and stuff like that like loss of cervical curve and what that indicates for my ligament damage that they're they no idea about that um so anyway i get there and crying the whole time because it's painful and very emotional and but they did ha thankfully help me fill out the paperwork because i told them i was like i can't fill out this it's like 20 pages of stuff and i went early so i had time and uh and I, I asked for somebody to like help me and they actually did around Vero Beach, like, I've asked every every doctor's office I've ever been to, I'm like, can you help me fill out the paperwork? I've been to, like, 15 different doctors here. The uh, emergency room wouldn't even help me fill out the paperwork. Like, you have to fill it. I'm like, I can sign it. You can fill it out. Just tell me what it says. And they're like, no, 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 you have to fill it out. I'm like, you're like, no, I don't. Like, show me the rule in the handbook, the employee handbook. You know, like, it, that's not bullshit. It's just right written on paper, right? Like, I'm, if I sign it, that means I'm looked at it and I agree. Anyway, God, like, I studied law. Like, I studied HIPAA law. Like, the, you know, like, it's not... I don't know why these people get these fucking stupid ideas. Anyway, people down on Vero Beach suck. And and so, and of course, I go to Melbourne, like, can you help me? They say, yeah. So, and then I talk, and then finally get to see the doctor. Of course, he's, like, half an hour late, as every doctor is. And, uh, and so then he looks at my stuff and I told him, I was like, I, I can't, like one of the main reasons I went is cause I was like, I like, we need to be able to see the problem on the MRI if you're going to do surgery. All right. And so you need to look at my imaging, and say like, look, you can't even see the problems. So what do we do? Right. How do we move forward? Right. Cause like, what if you can't see the problem on MRI? What if it is severe ligament damage? You can't see it. Right? Like, what do we do? Because, so I brought the stuff to prove that you can't see anything. Well, you can't see anything with the ligaments, I mean. Hey, 
So, like, and of course he looked at it and he's like, yeah, I don't see any problems with the ligaments, as, like, many other neurosurgeons have said, they, they don't see anything. And, uh, and, you know, he said maybe, you know, because if it's a, if it's a new, injury, oh, she sees that. She sees that, that lizard on the wall there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Anyway, so. Uh, so. It hurts to talk. Um, so, oh, look here she goes. She sees it. I think it's on the. I think it's on the outside. Sometimes they get on the inside. Anyway, so she. Um, what was I gonna say? So he. So he sees that stuff. Says he didn't have the, see the problem. And. Uh, and then. I show him my digital motion x-ray, which I have on my YouTube channel. And he looks at that and he's like, okay, he sees the ligament damage. And I was surprised because he actually wanted to see it. He actually wanted to watch a video himself. He watched the whole video. And then he looked at the PDF results, like what ligament damage is what. Uh... And, uh, and so, it's a problem that I can't work out my back so much because it's hard to do that with my neck. I bet I could put on the hard collar, but anyway, so he did that, and then, uh, and then he said he wanted me to get a newer one because that one was done like a year ago, a little more than a year ago. So he's like, he wanted to update one because my condition got a lot worse. I spent the last seven months mostly in bed. And he's like, yeah, I want to get a new DMX. And I was surprised because like, he's going to go off a digital motion x-ray. Like, I've never seen a neurosurgeon do that. Like, nobody does that. I mean, I've never. Well, Dr. Joel Frank in Tampa works with Dr. Postelweight, who invented the digital motion x-ray. And he uses it. Uh, a, he understands it. Understands the value of it. But in him... I've never seen anybody, like, even know what a digital motion x-ray is. It, not that this guy, like, uses him all the time, but, I, you know, he's one to look at it and ask me. The thing is, like, I, I still need money to get one. And I need money soon because my the rest of my body's falling apart, too. And I, and I can't exercise it. When I do exercise the rest of my body, it's fine. Like, when I work out my arms, when I work out my shoulders, when I work out my lower back, my upper back... When I work out my legs, when I work out my hips, when I work out my ankles, everything. Every joint in my body, it's like awesome. It's not saying it's perfect, right? But when I work it out, it, it just strengthens it to the point where it's like, I got no pain. Like I've been working out my hands, right? Uh, they're slightly stiff, but a lot better than they were. Like my shoulder, uh, my frozen shoulders got a lot more range of motion. Uh, my hips don't hurt, my knees don't hurt, my knees were fucking killing me, uh, and it's like, so I can, the rest of my body, regardless of what's going on with my connective tissue, I seem to be able to salvage it, but I can't do that, I can't, like, swim that much, like, if I could swim for a half an hour to an hour every day, that would do amazing things, if I could do yoga, if I could do all these things, like, rowing machine, if I could kayaking, um, hiking, like, all the, like, if I could do sled pulls, uh, but I can't because of my neck, because you use your neck a little bit, even if you have a brace, you gotta, you know, you you get sore around the edges of the brace, if you, if, because the brace will, you know, uh, apply pressure to those points, and it'll isolate certain things, like, like, your SCM up in here, uh, where it attaches up in the skull, um, that, gets isolated and used some when you wear a hard collar and like I was saying the middle part right here like I don't seem to be able to prevent that because if if you bend your head at all like if if you if you make completely neutral I don't think it gets but if you like lean forward a little bit like more in a soft collar because I got to use my hands to like get something to eat you know like my head's moving a little bit and muscles and ten tendons and ligaments have to hold it up somewhat, even with a soft collar. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so I need money with my GoFundMe to go see. I figure I might as well go see Dr. Uh, Hutchison 
because I was going to go see him anyway. <sighs> so, so I go see Dr. Hutchison. He's got a digital motion x-ray. He can also check my curve. So get two things out of the way. And he can look into like gentle curve correction. You know, stuff you wouldn't even notice, like to feel it. But could like help reduce the strain on my ligaments. Um, you know, or maybe I just, I get there and he's like, you know what? You should, you should hold off on curve correction. Maybe I just don't do anything. But he has a digital motion x-ray. He can give me the full thing and, and do all that. So I need the money to do that, though, because my family's like, uh, you, you just need to, like, do yoga and, and work out and then just get over it. And, you know, they don't understand, like, what it is to suffer. Because if, if they were going through this, they, they would do anything. They would spend anything to, you know, fix it. But they're not going through it. And, you know, I'm a man. So men are just supposed to either earn money or die. That's our purpose in society. You know, if I was a, a woman, they'd, they'd be like, like if it happened to a family member who was female and it was my age, they'd be like, uh, you know, and I'm not saying anyone in particular. I'm just saying anyone, any of my cousins, any of my, anyone who's female, they, they would get everything, everything they needed. There'd be no expense spared. Um, but because I'm a man, it's like, you know, go fuck yourself, like, make money or die, like, I, I don't know why that's the attitude, I don't know why men, like, nobody cares about it, like, I didn't choose to be a man, it just fucking happened in the womb, I just, you know, I got the chromosome, or whatever, and now here I am, I got facial hair, and a deeper voice, whoop de doo like, but, uh, I don't know, testosterone's kind of fun, but other than that, whatever you know um so uh i don't you know it's it's not right the men just are i'm not saying women don't get abandoned too like i know a lot of women whose family members don't care about them treat them like shit because they're sick uh who, but they just there's a little more sympathy for women a little more help you know, it's the same thing, like, if men become homeless and women become homeless, like, how many times you see, like, a homeless woman on the street versus a homeless man, like, and I'm talking about, like, I used to live in the, and uh, work around the bad parts of Philly and Wilmington and the bad parts of Columbus, and it's like, you know, homeless women, they weren't homeless long, and they weren't without help very long, and... Part of that is because people see them and they're like, uh, you're much more vulnerable than a man and we need to help you a ASAP. But men, we just look at them and we're just like, whatever, you fucking loser, and we just don't care. You know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But I need help because I can't physically work. And if I can get my neck fixed, then I could probably take care of the rest. Um, because, you know, like, rest of my body's not that bad, like, um, it's just not, like, if, if, if I could just, like, put a device around my head to take, turn gravity off from my head, I'd be fine, you know, I'd just go back to work and live my life, but, uh, I mean, I'd still have issues with my joints, and I'd be worried about, like, do I have connective tissue problems, like, really, like, do I have a college, I think, because, like, my tongue, you see that like the crack down the middle um i didn't take any collagen supplement for a week and it just was getting worse and not improving uh I, well same thing getting worse and it, yeah it was and then i started taking collagen again i like uh, and I was like, wow, just in one day, it was like a lot better, a lot more improved. And I'm like, like I was taking bovine, like hydrolyzed collagen. And, and so I took that and, uh, oh, oh, and, uh, yeah. And it seems to help my tongue a ton. And I'm like, I don't know, is my body not producing collagen? I'm still getting tested for Lyme, but that's like a six-week herbal thing, and then I get tested, and 
because I can't afford the Igenix test. Uh, yeah, but it's still, it's still something. It's a comprehensive test where for six weeks I take these herbs. It gets the bacteria into your bloodstream, and then they test they test me. I already have the blood kit ready to go. And then they'll test Lyme. Like maybe Lyme's eating my collagen or causing my body, not eating it, but causing my body to attack the collagen. Uh, but like something's not right. It just doesn't feel right with my collagen, with my ligaments. Like even with inactivity, like I never stopped like using my hands, right? I, I guess I stopped using them a lot. Like, I, I stopped using them as much. But, like, you know, I got problems with the, my the joints here. Like, my TMJ. I got, you know, my my fingers. They feel a lot better than they used to. God. But still, like, the, the it just doesn't feel like... Some, it just feels like something's a little weaker on average. Even And this was before I was even bed-bound. This was, like... In October of 2022, I was like, my, I'm working out, I'm going to the gym, I'm walk, going for long walks, like, I'm walking, like, three, four miles a day, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm just like, my, my joints just keep getting worse, like, my, my, uh, well, my chest was getting worse, but I, I couldn't work out my chest because of my frozen shoulder, so everything I was working out was improving, so, I don't know, but, but I know plenty of people that don't do chest exercises on the regular, and they're fine. And I'm, like, was having, like, issues where, like, I'd have, like, pains up in my pecs, pain down, like, where the pec attaches here. Like, I'm, like, I'm moving around a lot more than most people at that time, and I'm still, like, my chest is getting worse. And, you know, I was doing stuff. I just wasn't doing, like, push-ups and, like, pet flies and stuff like that, but I was still, like working in front of me with my hands, like, lifting stuff up, lifting 45-pound weights at the gym to, like, put them on the sled, and, like, uh, you know, I, so I, I don't know. It just, something, something doesn't seem right in my connective tissue. Uh, but it seems like if I, any joint that I can't exercise, any muscle I can't exercise, I can counteract it and, you know, undo the damage or make the, make the joint stronger, but something's wrong. Anyway, I need the money, and I need it as soon as possible, because I need to go to Tampa, I need to go to Fort Myers to get the DMX, and it's $600, uh, and I need to, and then I need to get that, and then I need to go back to Melbourne to have them evaluate it, and then schedule me for surgery if I want to do that. I don't know if he'd do a cranial cervical fusion, but he might do C1-C2, but that might be enough just to give me some stability. Um, I don't know, but, you know, this is a life or death situation. I mean, I was at Melbourne, total spine, and I was just thinking, like, maybe I should just kill myself, because, I mean, it wouldn't, I mean, I'm in pain all the time anyway, so I'm not really that worried about the pain, I'm just like, I don't, you know, I don't want to live like this, you know? And I don't want to die, I don't want to kill myself, I want to go on and live my life and there's a lot of people, I've, I, since I was a little kid, my thing that I always wanted to do was help people. That's all I wanted to do. I went to school to study psychology, and I just wanted to help people and animals. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. I mean, what I wished for every time there was a birthday cake, and what I wished for whenever I'd be at a wishing well, it was just, I just said, I want to be happy. I didn't wish for stuff. I just wanted to be happy. I don't want other people to be happy. So that's what I want, but I was just like, I don't, you know, there's only so much a person can take. There's no, it's not, it's not just that either. It's like if is if this would be the rest of my life, there'd be no point, right? Like, uh, what, what I'm just gonna lay in bed in pain the rest of my life? Like that's worse than death. That's stupid. Like that's why we should have the option for euthanasia. Like all these people, like I see suffering worse than death, and, and we're just told, like, you know, just hang in there, you know, <laughs> have faith, and it's like, okay, going on three years of uh, hell, and it keeps getting worse, um, but if I could fix my neck, then I could, you know, the rest of my body I seem to be able to fix, 
that's the truth. And uh, I don't have a problem facing the truth. But, like, yeah, I was, I was close to ending my life because I'm just, like, I don't, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to endure this pain and go through these surgeries and then recover from these surgeries. And, like, do I want to go through all that? And then what if it makes me worse? And I mean, what if it doesn't help as much as, it, you know, I get, you, you think about these things when you're near death. And people always tell me, they're like, oh, you're not near death. I'm like, well, you don't know what it's like to be in my body. Because it feels like dying. It really feels like dying, man. When your neck is this fucked up for this long. And the tinnitus and the stress. Yeah. But anyway, I need help. Because it's the only way to fix a problem in my neck, I think. But a regenerative medicine's not enough. Uh, unless you you guys want to give me like a hundred thousand dollars, I can get all the regenerative treatments I want, and maybe it'll be enough. <laughs> but uh, I don't think you know. Nobody cares about that, you know. Basically, I'm too poor to live. So, and my family's sitting on money, and they don't care. They'd rather take it to the grave. So, yeah. I need your help.